Hey, everybody, Rick Bassman here on Talking Tough Live, about to bring on Jake the Snake Roberts in just a minute or two. I usually do these really long, meandering introductions. I'm going to save all that today. I want to get to Jake. Uh, we've got an hour with him. Very gracious of him to give us that time, and I appreciate it. And I'll thank him when he's on. Uh, one thing I've never mentioned about Talking Tough, we talk about, uh, you know, having conversations with the world's toughest men and women at their most vulnerable and really kind of digging deep. And, and we do that. One thing I haven't mentioned before is this Talking Tough was initially configured as a reality show. And it may or may not happen eventually. I think it will. But all that beside, the, the subtitle for the show was The Boys Last Chance Hustle and Support Club. And you know, it's like, uh, you guys know my story by now. I've got that whole nine life gimmick where it's probably more like 14 lives and whatnot at this point. Jake Roberts is one of the few guys I know, very few that I, I think has me well outnumbered. So we'll get into some of those stories and uh, we'll find out what's going on with him today. And uh, without further ado, let me um, introduce uh, a guy I'm happy to say is my friend and our guest here today live on Talking Tough. Jake the Snake Roberts. Hey, Jake. Hey, guys. Glad to be here, man. Yeah, thank you so much um, for being on. You know, you you and I didn't really prep for this. We, we talked a little bit about it. And, you know, of course, we'll go into to some stuff that's pro wrestling related. I think it's expected by people that are watching. And plus, it's, it's stuff that I, from a fan, I'm always a fan and always will be, stuff that I'm going to want to know. Um <laughs> But what I want to talk about is, you know, you, the man, the person, um, your journey, where, where you are today. And you've been an open book, man. Um, you know, I do the same thing. People oftentimes go, man, I can't believe you shared what you shared. But hopefully we're not just uh, we're not playing the poor me game. We're hopefully inspiring, motivating, giving strength, hope and experience. How does it feel, man, to like be in the role of a guru all of a sudden? That That's how I see you now. Well, you know. People can call me what they want. I, I'm doing this to save me, you know. Um, I found out that if I was going to survive, I had to, to get real. And the only way you can get real, man, is by expo exposing all your weaknesses, all your failures, all your pain. You got to to let, put it all out there, man, because secrets will kill you. That's what I found out. The, the secrets in my life were causing me to react in the wrong way. I would drink, I would drug, anything to medicate it, to make it go away, those secrets. So to get better, I had to expose myself and become that open book. And that's when I started to heal. That things could get better. That things weren't over. Because there were for a long time that I'd, I'd have given up. I was ready to die. Hell, I was begging to die. You know? I yeah, mean, you I talked about that a year ago. Somebody but... dying. Every time I'd hear about somebody dying, man, I'd get pissed off and curse God and say, why not me? Man, I was dying. I was dying to die, you know? And, uh, but once I started talking about my problems, talking about my life, about the real me, not the, the stuff that you get on television, that's when I started to get better. And the more I put out there, the better I got. And then all of a sudden, I've got people coming to me saying, thank you, Jake, for talking about that. Oh, my God, that's fuel to the fire now. You know, and because I found out <laughs> through all my years of getting high, the best high I've ever gotten is the one that someone gave me when they thanked me, when they showed me appreciation for helping them. 
you know, I often talk about my favorite one. And I get letters all the time from kids and, and, and wives and, and moms and dads thanking me for helping their child or their significant other get through a point in their life. And um, I had a fucking like nine-year-old boy thank me for helping his dad get it to where he could come back home. Man, that was such an awesome feeling. I had a lady come to me on the cruise, a Jericho cruise. And she told me, she said, my husband drank for, for 50 years. And he's seen your thing and he, he quit drinking. I said, well, Jesus, where's he at? Well, unfortunately he died in a car wreck two months ago, but I had seven months of him being sober. And it was the best seven years, seven months of my life. Dude. I didn't and it's amazing for you to feel that, to hear that. Yeah, because you you have that influence, that profound effect. You know, don't so, we Jay, all want to make a difference on this planet? I mean, I used to want to make a difference by what I did in the ring. Well, guess what? That didn't work. I mean, yeah, it worked for a period of time, for a moment. But it wasn't something that was going to live on even after I'm gone. Uh, you know, I've, I've got the gimmick. Oh, go ahead, Jake. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Go no, ahead. you go ahead. I'm just gonna... I've got the, this little gimmick, although it's not a gimmick, where I don't know if you spend much time on social media, but people these days, they're, they're pouring their hearts out on social media. And I, I tend to be drawn to that stuff, people that are really in trouble. And three to four times a week, and look, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm not famous. People know, you know, I'm, I'm part of the F list. I'm like the G list, if that even exists. But I'll write, and this is sort of, and it sounds like it'd be annoyingly self-deprecating, but that's how I see myself. I'll write to people that I see on Facebook that are in trouble saying, hey, this is probably not any of my business, but call me anytime. I would love to talk with you. And I'll have three to yeah. four conversations a week with strangers. Uh, and it's amazing, man. You know, it, they say when we do charity, it helps two people, the person you're giving to, and it helps ourselves too. I'm not doing it for yeah, that sure reason. Does. Reason, but certainly, but you're right, man. Nothing, nothing feels better than that. That's for sure. You know, that, that's um, one, do you feel? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask how much pressure, if any, you put on yourself then to, to stay straight. You know, you know we, we have similar journeys like two steps forward, five steps back, well, and eventually, hopefully, it goes yeah. the other way. Uh, I, I'm on the point now, man, and I'm so grateful for this. That I haven't had an urge at all, man, in years. Wow. You know, I've got ten I've got ten years now. And I haven't had an urge for anything in the last six years. Um I, I kind of made a joke, man. I I was somewhere, I can't remember where I was, I was in a comedy show I was doing. And the guy come to me and say, man, he says, I got an extra eight ball. He says, I just want to hook you up, man, because you were great out there. I'm like, dude, where were you 10 years ago when I needed you, you know? And uh, I just told him, he said, not anymore, brother. And he's like, you're kidding. I'm like, no, man. I said, this is for real, bro. And I just laughed about it because I thought, you know, 10 years ago, man, he'd been my best friend. Oh, God. You know? hell, hell yeah, man. And, you know, yeah, and, you know, and, you know it drives me, you know, it's, it's funny how things like that come up, you know, people offering to buy you drinks now that you don't drink, you know, and I'm like, no, man, that's, that's cool. That's all good. You know, I got to imagine it's always been that way for you, Jake. And, you know, w one thing I don't do on this podcast, and I want to say this, I don't, I don't sit here and like blow smoke up people's asses or try to kiss up to them. Um, but there's, so, so I hope you'll take the following as sincere. There, there's something about you and, and, I, and I would say Roddy, I was very close with Roddy as well. The two of you guys had a special charisma that I always thought it exceeded the rest. Now, that was in my viewpoint as a fan. Uh, I, re I remember in the mid-80s, you know, and I started I started Sting and Warrior, as you know, in the mid-80s. And I was in the business for a minute. When I got out, I became a fan again. I remember being um, in Denver, living there when you guys came through. 
And I was an agent at an agency. And I went with these the other three agents who were all these beautiful females. And man, all three of them, and these are like straight chicks, you know, seemingly straight chicks. And all three of them were talking about how they wanted to bang Jake the Snake Roberts. And I'm like, where are they now? <laughs> well, just now. like the guy with the dough, where are they now? <laughs> <laughs> just like the guy with the eight ball, right? Well, maybe we get all four of them together. Yeah, and see what's up. Man. I, I don't know, but um, you know, did you live like? Did you live that sex, drugs, and rock and roll star deal? Was, was it that crazy I, for you? I did for a long time. I did for a long time, man. And uh, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth is that ruined my sex life. You know. Um, it got to a point, man, that, you know, it went from being once a night to twice a night, then twice a night to two, di two, two times, but with two different chicks. Uh, of course. Yeah. I had to add this and I had to add that. And the next thing I know, I've got like, okay, I've got to, there's going to be two chicks. I've got to, Bring in a clown and a donkey, and um, you know we'll go from there. You know, and it just got so outrageous because you know you're always looking for something to click your mind to get you going. Mm -hmm. You know, to get you in the mood, if you will. And I was looking for things outside of a real relationship to get me going, whether it be drugs or just strange things or whatever my mind can come up with. And then what happens is it gets to a point that when you go home and you've got your significant other there, all of a sudden you can't uh, get in the game. Mm -hmm. you know? What's left? Yeah, I've been and, there and I've seen it all. Yeah, you know, it's like, okay, what well, I do? I, mean, I, I remember one night, man, I shot myself in my penis with testosterone. Oh, oh wow. God, did that hurt. What, what was your thought process behind that? I've got to ask you, man. I, I was, because my old lady was to the point, if you don't do something, I'm going to know you've been screwing around. Oh, you were on the spot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tried that. And boy, that did not work. But God damn, it hurt. Holy I, I, crap, that I, shit hurt. It's hurting me even thinking about it, man. So, so the drugs and the alcohol, thankfully, are a thing of the past. No no more urges. Is there um, no, is there a significant other in the in the future? What do you I, think? I, what do you, what do you hope? So, man, you, my, you know, yeah. my greatest fear, my greatest fear, no, without a doubt, is dying alone. You know, okay. I don't want to do that. And I feel like I have a lot to offer someone. You know, my my life was so screwed up in the beginning, man. Uh, my dad raping my mother, uh, having me at the age of 13, uh, being molested by my stepmother. A lot of anger towards women. I didn't, didn't trust women. And uh, it just kept going in, in my life. It just seemed to happen like that. And then as I got to be 30, 40 years old, I had such a distrust built into me that if things started getting good with the chick, I had to do something to screw it up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I to, definitely I, I know what you're saying. I had to have yeah. them mad. I wanted to screw them over before they got to me. You know? So, you know, and, I, yeah, go on, please ruined yes. a lot of relationships, man, that I had an opportunity to have something good. Um, I, I really hope that in the future there's somebody that comes along that, you know, will accept me as I am and, uh, and maybe it'll happen. You know, I know we've had, um, for, for, for all the eligible it ladies. Out. That's okay, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, you know, just uh, be careful what you ask for. That's all I can tell you. You, you, you just so, might get it. Uh, I, I know we've had a couple of brief conversations about that, man. And I, and I thought they were pretty cool guy-to-guy -guy talks about what's happening with the, the females in our life and what's not talking. So, yeah. or what's not happening. So I want to say this to the uh, 
to the eligible bachelorettes out there, you know, I, I loved hearing where you were. I mean, it sounded like hopefully this applies to both of us that we're at a point in our life where it's just about love and, and respect and not, not the donkeys yeah, and the clowns anymore. Thank God. No, uh, man, none of that shit no more, man. I, I just want somebody I can spoon with, man. Somebody that when I wake up the next morning, I'm glad I'm there. You know what I mean? I do. That, uh, that's perfect. Not ashamed, yeah. not uh, afraid, um, not angry, you know, somebody that I can be gentle with and uh, shower them with whatever I can, you know, and just, uh, yeah, man. I think of talking with you about it in the here and here now that that's that's so right on. Did, I know that you've um, you've gone through the twelve step program to a degree at least, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, did you do that? Step. <laughs> After you, did you do the sex inventory? Do you remember that part? In in the no, fourth step, I, I you know I got right with the twelve step program, but the twelve step program is not really what got me out, man. You know, so what uh, is it then? What got me out was hope. And, uh, you know, when, when I came to stay with Dallas, I was at such a dark, dark place. I'd given up for sure, wanted to die. Uh, I had not seen a good thing happen to myself in a couple of years. Um, nothing positive happened in my life. And in a very short time, I started losing weight. And that was such a high for me to actually say, Oh, my God, I can do something. You know, and I kept working at it. And the weight came off of me. And I started feeling better. And I started having positive thoughts. But I still had a wall up. And um, I can remember clear as a bell, man. Dallas making me go in front of a mirror and look in the mirror and say, hey, man, I like you. And uh, it took me about six months to do that, you know, because I had so much hate for myself because of my failures, because of my mistakes. I tell people the hardest thing about drinking and drugging is not quitting. That's not the hardest thing. The hardest thing is forgiving yourself. Without, without I was going to ask, where are you on a scale of one to 10 on self-forgiveness? Are you there? Or do you backslide on, on that at all? I, I still backslide on that a bit. And I, I still have some pretty horrible dreams where I remember some of the horrible shit that I did and I just have not let it go, you know, and uh, maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing because maybe if I didn't have that, I might backslide to some other way. And I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's, I, I, all I we can know, do. I just know, I just know this right now that I'm the happiest I've been in 15, 20 years. And that's, I, I love to hear, I love to hear that. And I, I want to, I want to take a, a second here and be kind of be kind of appreciate to the to the audience. Most people, I think, on here, if not everybody, has seen Resurrection of Jake the Snake. They know your story, and, and it, you know we hear about rock bottoms all the time. And we're not measuring; yeah. it's not a dick measuring contest. But I, I would say your bottom is about as far down as somebody can fall. And and I want to point out to anybody watching out, there's a lot of people out there suffering. Look at Jake. Here's a guy who has been at the bot the, the depths of the bottom. And you just heard he is a happy person these days, man. It can happen for all of us. Yeah. Man. So if, if somebody out there, Jake, is having trouble with self-forgiveness, what what do you tell them? If God can forgive you, who are you not to forgive yourself? Hell yeah. Yep. That's what I keep telling myself. Um People just need to realize that we are human. But those memories, they're going to fly back at you, man. But maybe 
like I said, maybe those are there for a reason. Maybe they're there for a reality check to keep you in line, to keep you toe in the line. I mean, I have I have bad nights and then I have great nights, man. I mean, are you kidding me? And, and 10 years ago, I didn't have anything but shit nights, you know? And, um, wow, I mean, I think back 10 years ago, what I was doing, I'm like, oh, my God. I was doing, I was doing an eight ball a day every friggin' day, man. At Holy least cow, eight. that's a lot. At least an eight ball. Wow. And I was smoking. And I was smoking it. And uh, I was drinking on top of that. And it, it's a wonder that I'm not in prison, man. It really is. You know, because I damn sure did more than enough to get there. Yeah. But I guess God had something else for me to do, you know, and he kept me just out of prison. Really did, man, because damn, man. You're doing it right now. I, the place, I should be dead, man. The places and things that I did. I mean, I, I remember stealing a car one time in Puerto Rico because it was three o'clock in the morning and the taxis wouldn't take you down to the drug section of town. They said, no, you can't go down there after dark. So I hot wired a car in a hotel and drove down there. And it was a one way street. And I went down the street and every, every now and then as I passed the house, I'd look up and I'd see somebody coming out with an automatic weapon. And I got to the end and they surround my car and I hear they're, they're, they're loading up, man. You know? And I'm like, Hey man, I just want some fucking shit, man. And they're like, shake the snake. Robert's the wrestler. I'm like, yeah, dude, you know me. And the guy's like, amigo, I don't care. You come here at night, you die. I'm like, fuck <laughs> you. Just give me my dope, man. So he wound up saying, I'm like, I can't believe this here. Take this. It's on me but we're going to keep your car. I'm like, okay, no problem. <laughs> and, and I walk back to the hotel, man. I mean, that's insanity. insanity. They give you a ride back at least? Jeez, that no. is crazy, man. That is I did, crazy. I didn't mind walking. I had a pipe. I just kept smoking. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, look, Jake, that, that is crazy. I, I, I want to ask you something else about forgiveness. We talked about self-forgiveness and I want to get on to like forgiveness of others for a moment because I, I know you've had your your battles with others in the industry and, and in life. And I read about, I believe it was I read an article about you talking with Warrior at uh, when he was inducted yeah. into the hall. And now I'm gonna ask you for your help with something, if if you don't mind. I started Warrior in the business. We had a bad falling out, and he and I never got the chance to reconcile. So you reconciled. You reconciled with him, is that right? I would like help to get there myself now that he's passed. Yeah, I did, man. Well, I, I reconciled with him, man, because I was going to beat his ass. Mm -hmm. I was going to jump him at, uh, at the induction. And the first day we got there, we had to go and do the walkthrough stuff. And he caught me off guard, man. And I turned around, he was right there. And he's like, Jake, I just want to tell you, I'm so sorry for screwing you over. I cost you so much money, man. He goes, all I can tell you is, is I'm so fucking sorry I, I was that way. And it totally disarmed me. He's all bad, sure. Well, you see, we had words uh, before we did the angle. I was in Orlando and one of the agents tells me, hey, Vince is on the phone for you. I'm like, oh fuck, what have I done now? And I went to the phone and it was Vince. And he's like, Vince, Vince says, uh, Jake, you need to go to Warrior's dressing room and talk to him about doing an angle with you and him. I'm like, you want me to come up with the idea? No just ask him for his permission to wrestle him. Oh, God. All right. Are you fucking serious? You me, right? you, you've got to talk him into wrestling you. I'm like, wow. Are you fucked? Oh, my God. So I hung up. 
And I cooled off and I went down there and I played the game. I knocked on the door. Knocked again. Knocked again. Started to walk off and he jerks the door over. Yeah, what do you want? I'm like, I'd like to talk to you. He goes, come in here. So I went in and he says, what do you want? I'm like, man, I'd like to work with you, man. I think we could do some business. And he's tying his shoes up and stuff and he just stops and he throws his shit in the floor and he goes, let me tell you one thing. I don't give a fuck about you, your problems, or your family. Fuck all of them. You better show up on time and be ready to fucking bump. <laughs> right. And I just looked at him and I said, I'll fucking be there, man. Okay, get the fuck out. Yeah. So, what happens is, we shoot all those vignettes. I take six weeks off. We're going to SummerSlam. And after SummerSlam, it's going to be me and him. That's going to be my big run in New York. What happens? He gets fired at SummerSlam. Because mm -hmm. he held Vince McMahon up for a million dollars. Right. So... Is he came back through the door there at the garden and Vince said, you're fucking fired. Get your shit and get out. Vince looked right at me and he goes, you got the worst fucking luck. <laughs> right. Wow. Well, what did I do? I didn't do a fucking thing. You were cooperating, man. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. shit. So when he apologized to you at the Hall of Fame, was he was he sincere? Did, did it feel sincere? He was very, very, very sincere, and he went he went further. I thought he would ever go. He um, wanted to meet my family, wanted to meet my grandkids, and he introduced himself to my my boys and told them how great I was. And then play with my grandkids. Nice. Wanted to oh, take yeah. pictures with them. I couldn't fucking believe it, man. Well, I'm, I'm happy. I understood to it later. I okay. understood it later. You know, but I found out later that he apologized to several people that, that uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. He knew he was dying, man. Yeah. He knew what was going on. So, and, and I hate. I hate the thing with his daughters watching him die in the parking lot. Oh, God. I know. That's awful. I, I, yeah, as much as I had not reconciled my feelings about me, about him, I felt for that. No, no, no children should ever, ever have to witness that. Um, yeah, you can't hate the kids, man. You know? Anybody else out there that you've got um, fences to mend with in the industry? Or is, there, is your slate clean these days? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's clean. I think uh, <coughs> the only other two people I had any problem with are dead. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, Dallas, um, da Dallas did me a huge favor a few years ago. I was, I was getting ready to, to put my book out and it's not a wrestling book because who am I to put out a wrestling book, but there's a chapter about pro wrestling in there. And I have a little yeah. section that I called the good, the bad, and the ugly of pro wrestling. And at the end of it, I had a list of who was good and who was bad. And and Paige oh. says to me, you can imagine, right? Paige says to me, dude, he goes, you can't put that out there. And we went back and forth on that. And I'm like, I know it's bad business, right? And he goes, fuck that. He goes, yeah, it's bad business, but just think about what it says about you as a person that you would even think that way and then advertise the fact you would think that way. And, you know, I, I yeah. intellectually, I understood it intellectually. Um, and, I and I took this section out and it took me like another three or four years though to really like, as I say, to go from the head to the heart, to really, to feel yeah. and understand the concept of forgiveness. But I, I think Paige set me in that direction. So uh, I just thought I'd mention that since you're in his yeah. house at the moment. He's got a he's got a way of doing that, man. I mean, Dallas is no angel, okay? He, he's done his shit too, but he's he's real big about making amends, man, and about 
about being right, you know? And I just found out that if I'm going to think good of myself, I've got to do good things, you know? Absolutely. And, and that Absolutely. makes sense to me. That makes sense to me, you know? And um, for me, it's just easier being, being a kind person. It takes too much work to be mean and ugly these days. You know, yeah. it's like... Because you really without without be question, really a special asshole. To, 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 but think to how easy you to be noticed for being an asshole. Without question, and I agree. But think how easy it used to be to be mean and ugly. I was easier then. And you know what I find is like I almost call it going to like going to the spiritual gym because for the longest time I like I had to force myself to be nice. I'm like when I go out today, I'm going to yeah. force myself to be nice to the first five people I come across. And then the more I did that, then it becomes yeah. part of who you are. Thank God, you know, it's still a journey. I'll never sure. be able to there, but um, I I feel you on that, man, for for sure. I mean, you could be you could be kind without being stupid. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that too. You don't have to. You don't have to open your. I mean, drop your pants and bend over and take it up the ass. No, but you can be good to people, man. Uh, you, know, you can be kind to people. I, um, you can avoid I, bullshit too. Mm -hmm. You know, I I avoid bullshit. You know, if I smell shit, I keep away from it. Yep, yep. That's making better decisions, isn't it? Who we associate ourselves with? Yeah, and, sure it is, man. It's making better decisions. Pick your fights, man. Pick yep. your fights. There's some there's some people that you just can't win with because they're hell bent on being losers. And they're hell bent on being miserable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how give it a shot. If it burns, walk away. No, man, that that's words of wisdom. And I'm sitting here nodding because I'm thinking about situations going on in my own life where I kind of have this like fear of abandonment thing going on, which comes from my childhood. So I I try okay. I try to my own detriment sometimes to mend fences that probably are not meant to be mended. And I'll try too hard because I have this need to not be separated yeah. from others. But I'm listening to you right now going, yeah, you are so same, right. Same, same give, it, give, give it your best same and back here. off. Right? Yeah. 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 You got to learn, man. There's a, you know, one thing about this pandemic. I am so impressed and so excited about 85% of the people, I think, are really being good and genuine and loving mm -hmm. and caring. You know, there's always going to be a percentage that are just dicks. You can't keep from it. But I, I am so happy with the way the American people have pulled together corporations, non-corporations. I'm still kind of disgust, disgusted with the Republican Democrat horse shit that goes on. That's the only problem I'm having. You know, Otherwise, I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're still pulling these games and strings, and you're trying to impeach somebody that's going to be out in so many months. Why don't you just shut the fuck up and make do? You know, instead of wasting 20 or 30 million or 100 million on impeaching somebody that's going to be there for the next six months anyway. So shut the fuck up and get in the car. So, you know, I mean, I, myself, I, without going into politics, I love Trump, man. You know, um, I'm his favorite wrestler. Yeah, you know him from that. I, I had a meeting with him in his office in 86 with these three football players from the Denver Broncos called the Three Amigos. And we were in New York. These guys were very hot. I was managing them. So I called his office and asked, just requested a meeting. And the assistant called back and said, sure, yeah. come meet him. So we went and said hello. We had no agenda. He he thought it was cool. We thought it was cool. I, I'm not I'm not political. Yeah, I don't talk about it. Um, not saying what side I'm on because that yeah. doesn't matter. I, I, I'm with you. Though. I believe in the yeah. fundamental goodness of people. And, and I think for the most part, that's coming out right now. Yeah, I like you, man. Nice, it's nice to see that these yeah, days. He, uh, someday when you got, you got a, a long minute, I'll tell you a great story, man, because uh, – if a couple of things had happened, I, I'd be in the White House with him right now. <laughs> um, you, can, 
You can tell that story now if you're so inclined. No, I'm going to save it for my book. What, what is your book coming out? Uh, well, hopefully in the next four months with this pandemic okay. shit screwing some things up. It's written. Uh, I wrote it all myself. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about 600 pages. All right. What's it called? And it's, and it's the first It's the first half of my life. I haven't named it yet. Okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't mention to you, I Googled the other day. I Googled, because you told me you're, you had a book coming out. So I was wondering if anything was out there on it yet. And I Googled Jake Roberts' book. Have you, you ever put that, you ever Googled that before? Yeah. I got, I, I had to ask you this question, and I swear I'm not making this up. There's a book called Sex Addiction, Get on the Road to Recovery and Learn to Live and Love Again by Jake Roberts. Is that you? No. Nope. Should be, right? <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I'm not making this up, be. man. I'm not making that up. So uh, I'll have to check that out, man. I, I I didn't think it was you, but I had to ask. <laughs> All right. Um, no. But you're. It, it, it may have been somebody that took a bunch of quotes of mine and put it in a book, but I don't know. There you go. And we. We probably just sold some books for this guy too. I'll bet you. We may have to ask for a royalty on yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Uh, so your book, yeah, no doubt. So the first half, six hundred pages, and it's autobiography, then. Yeah, yeah. It's. Right. Uh, I think it's the first real book that's ever been put out about pro wrestling. Okay. All right. Good. You know, um, I don't. I don't go into stories about knocking this guy or knocking that guy or telling of his habits or my habits or whatever. I talk about me. It's the first book in wrestling that's ever been written about just one guy, me. <laughs> I mean, I've been in so many other fucking books. <laughs> now, are you, um, so, uh, how are you writing this? I have to ask, are you writing it longhand or are you on a computer or someone doing it? Someone taking dictation? I just speak into a microphone, bro. Okay. Speak right into on. a microphone and have it transcribed. Have yeah. Transcribe it for you. That, that's cool. And you think about four months. So we'll definitely be looking out for that. And uh, Yeah. I uh, spent uh, about six years writing it. Wow. Wow. I'm looking forward to it. Well, man, if, uh, if, if by the time we're done here in about 20 minutes, if, uh, if, if you don't hate me too much, I definitely want to have you back on to promote your book when it comes out, man. That would oh, be, definitely, definitely, man. Thank you. That that would be awesome. Uh, you know, I want to ask you, ask you a little bit. There's a lot of people uh, watching right now and getting a lot of questions. Um, I, I do want to ask you a couple AEW-related questions real quickly, if, if you don't mind. Um, so, first of all, I mean, are, are you enjoying it? Is it a job or is it something you're really enjoying? I am loving the hell out of being there. Um, they are wonderful to me. Um, it's just really, really awesome. It really is, you know, and uh, it, it's it's wonderful, bro. That's all I can tell you. And I, which is, I, I, you can see that when you watch you, and I and I thought that would be the case, but wanted wanted to to ask you, so. You, we've an interview with special been, people there. There really is, and uh, I'm looking forward to to doing more for them. Um, and I will be there as long as I'm having fun. And you're with uh, Lance Archer's with you right now. He's a nice guy. Yes. I, I like him, and he's he's a hell of a yeah, talent. I've also. never met Lance until there, and um, I'm very impressed with him. And are you um? And Christian Man. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, he's a really good straight shooter. Yeah, yeah he, really cool guy. Um, who uh, who do you have your eye on to, to bring into the fold, if anybody? Who who would be good as part of your crew there? I don't know, man. I, I got to kind of keep that under the wraps, I think. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Is there a... Just, uh, just is, know is, this. Is there... Just know this. I've been on there now for what 10, 12 weeks, and you haven't seen a snake yet, and you haven't seen me DDT anybody yet. I was just going to ask you about those two things, man. You beat me to it. Yeah, <laughs> All right, cool. Well, sooner or later they'll have to happen. So there's going to be a, there's going to be a Damien in in your future again, then. Yeah, 
I, you never know. You just never know. Just think Do you, about uh, <laughs> I was wondering, I was going to ask you that question. Do you, um, you like animals in general? No. Yeah, I do like animals in general, but snakes, no, not so much. Yeah, man, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I actually got bitten by a, um, by a cotton mouth about three years ago. And in, in my, oh, that's uh, nice. oh my God, man, talk about true pain. Wow. I've been shot and stabbed before no shit. And, and the snake bite hurt more. Yeah, man, it, they, they are nasty too, man. They are mean. On the, onto my calf. I literally had to like pry it off. It wasn't like a bite and jump back. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. They'll chase, they, a cotton mouth will chase you. <laughs> man, I, I got it good. In a corner, two or two of my dogs had cornered it. So I got it in the middle because I didn't want to oh. get in my dogs. But um, oh my god! But the, oh, but Jesus. The, the upshot is, man. I used to be like deathly afraid of, afraid of snakes. Now I'm like, well, I got bitten by the worst and survived it, so I'm not as afraid anymore. That's that's the upshot of that story, I well, guess. I don't know, bro. I, I got bit probably twenty five times, and I'm still scared of them bastards. Are are you? How about um? How about French yeah. bulldogs, man? Paige got a bunch of French bulldogs running around that house. Uh, he did, but now they're all gone. Okay, <laughs> right, cool. Um, so sometimes, at, at, sometimes the wives take something with them. So, are you finding at AEW? Are you mentoring a lot of people there? I, I know you've you've in an interview said you have a lot to give back to the industry, and and it's pretty obvious to yeah. all of us what it is. Well, you know, I've, I've offered myself to many. Uh, there's been a couple of guys come and start asking things. I think the guys are, yeah, it, it really gets me, man. I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I'm wanting to help these people so much. And yet I can't get through my thick head that some of them, most of them are so intimidated just by my presence. And, I don't get it because I don't look at myself like that, you know, and it's really funny to watch, but hopefully um, if people get used to me being around, they will start asking more. And uh, there's certainly a lot to be given a lot. So when your when your day starts now, like you mentioned earlier in the uh, in the interview, that you have a lot of hope, which is such a, a beautiful thing to hear, truly. Because what if you have hope, you don't have hope, you don't have anything. When right. this is usually a question I ask right at the end, but I want to ask it now. Like what what are you excited about in life right now? I ask myself, like what do I want to be when I grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up, Jake? What's the goal? What's exciting? I, I'm, un, I'm not really sure. I, I think right now I'm, I'm just trying to see what God presents for me. You know, I mean, I, I've realized I have so much fun just being me. You know, uh, I have so much fun training, working out. Uh, I really enjoy watching my body change. I mean, I'm going to be 65 next month. And Paige has been putting me through some workouts that a 40-year-old shouldn't do. Yeah. And I survived. You're, um, get, you're getting through them. No problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a problem, man. Oh, well, my God, right. man. <laughs> he hit me with one two days ago, brother, that just dropped me to my knees, man. And, in fact, uh that last night I slept 12 hours. And uh, when I woke up today, I was actually sore from sleeping. You know, but I was so exhausted that Dallas, uh, he gave me a break today. He says, you need to take the day off. Your body needs it. Yeah, and, he knows. Uh, he has. And uh, uh, that's good because, you know, he, he I need him to push me, but I don't want him to cripple me, you know. And uh, he watches me pretty good, man. He makes me wear a heart monitor, and we watch all that stuff, which that heart monitor just pisses him off because uh, my heart is so fantastic, man. I, I don't know how in the hell it is, but 
uh, when I'm just sitting, uh, you can check my my heart rate right now. It'd probably be 50, 55, 56. Wow. And uh, you check you check pages sitting down. Dallas is sitting down. And it's going to be about 85 or 90. <laughs> Uh, hey, you all have heard it here first, man. Jake Roberts beat Dallas Page on the heart monitor. That's that's good oh, news, yeah. man. Yeah, he'll tell you. He, I tell him it's the cigarettes that does it. <laughs> are you are you still smoking cigarettes, really? You still yeah, man, it? I'm trying to quit, man. I'm are trying you? to okay. quit. All right. Yeah, man. But that's um that's it, yeah. right? I mean, how's I've the diet? I'm trying to quit for. 15 years, man. I really have, man. And I just, okay. man, I can't get there. Well, you're, you, Jake, you're so mentally strong these Again, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, man. I, I mean this. Yeah. You're so mentally strong these days. You've made such huge strides. So wh why why are you not quitting yet? What, what's in the way? Maybe we can figure it out. I don't know, bro. Uh, right. I've tried everything from Chantix to acupuncture to all sorts of weird stuff. I even got, I even got crazy with my my thoughts on that. So I, go tell no, you no, no, that. I don't mean to lead you but, that way. You know, you know what, Jake, with all the stuff you've done, no, you've been just, through. I used to like say, okay, I'm going to reward myself, you know, with something special. <laughs> That's all right. Now, you, you, I can't yeah, tell I, you what special was. But, it wasn't a drug, I'll tell you that. <laughs> all right. It was a night with a couple of hookers in Vegas. I don't know. Oh, that probably was it. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, it probably I, was. So, but you feel good. I mean, physically, health wise, you're, I feel you're feeling good. You know, I, I'm beat up. I need a couple of surgeries right now. I got to have my hands worked on. Um, this finger, that's as straight as it gets. Um, I gotta have right corporal tunnel, left corporal tunnel done, and some tendons snipped because my my hands are contracting like this, and it's from being hit in the head too many times. But I gotta have that done, and then I've gotta have a. Uh, oh my God! I can't believe I'm. Oh, I, I just hate thinking about it. Um, I, I gotta have a procedure done. Uh, because my uh, prostate's swollen, and um, of course that comes with a, a calf in my penis for three days, and I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, that is every every male's nightmare, man. I, all I can say is I'm sorry to hear that, Jake. Oh my God. When when is uh, yeah. when is that? Happening? Well, it was scheduled right before the uh, pandemic broke out, and that's they canceled them. So I got a reprieve, you know, which okay. kind of pissed me off because it was uh, like four days before I was supposed to do it, and I'd worked on myself for several days trying to get my head around it, you know. Yep. Yep. And uh, I talked to my penis for hours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. okay. It's okay. No, it's oh, not. No, so it's not. <laughs> that, that begets the following question, man. So now you're, you know, now we can get a little anxious about things because it's now put off for a minute. So what what do you tell your penis now to make you uh, to make you feel better about having to wait a bit? How how do you deal with the worry? Uh, we're we're still not talking. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, after the last one, because he was ready for it, and then it didn't happen. All right. Uh, so not, Jay he's not trusting me right now. Oh yeah, I, I think I think you'll win them back, man. I do. I have faith. So w when you wake up, and if you do worry about stuff, because we all worry, no matter no matter what guru state yeah. we get to, do you have do you have tools or a practice that you can call up to get your to get your head right? Because you have a soul experience with this now. I just wonder if it's like something you read or something you watch, or it's just your own internal no, thought process. It's usually just get quiet. Settle, you know. If I've got a bunch of crap running through my head that's not good, I just do some breathing exercises, you know, and mm -hmm. um, get get still, you know. Because usually, whenever I'm amped up, I'm uh, moving around, my hands are moving, everything's moving, 
and my thoughts are racing by me. So that's when I just go, wait a fucking minute, dude. Slow the F down, you know, and I just try to get flat or get in a chair and just sit there and meditate for a few. All right. I, I know I wanted to know that from you, and I, I would think everybody out there would too. Just again, because you've been through so much and come to, to <coughs> such a good, a good place. And even though I don't, I think people don't always know how they got there. It, it's it's so cool watching people that have done that and, and doing the best we can to learn about what worked for you. Because there's people out there that, that need the inspiration and, and need the tools. So just getting get in quiet and slowing down, huh? That, that'll work. Yeah, man. Just uh, stop thinking. You know? Stinking thinking. You know, that's that's the thing for me, man. My, my stinking thing, it makes me sick of myself. So I just, I try to get quiet. And then I, I just start, start breathing. You know, put my hands on my diaphragm and let it go. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually sort of like uh, Boris, and, Boris and Natasha from uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. You know, let the good air in, push the bad air out. Bullshit. You know. <laughs> I'm doing it right now as we're as we're talking. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. All right, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to slide if you don't mind. No, I know that. I was actually about to remind you. You you, you asked me to remind you at the top of the audit hour or bottom of the hour. And we're there. Yeah, man. Thank you yeah. so much, Jake. I, right, I really bro. do appreciate it. Please tell uh, Dallas I said hello. And I will. We'll do this again sometime, bro. Please, man. Thank you very much. So good to see you, Jake. And I'm really glad you're doing well. Take care, man. Take care, hey, my everybody friend. Everybody out there, try helping somebody. It'll make you feel good. Take care. Well, everybody, that was uh, Jake the Snake Roberts here on Talking Tough. And uh, I, I know we're, uh, guys, I've seen your questions coming in. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten to them. Jeremy McPeak, how you doing, buddy? Stasiak, ask Jake about Sister Abigail, our mutual friend, uh, Tatavik. I love Tat. Um, Rick Drayson, my bald brother from another mother. I still think, Rick, you and I are the two best-looking old bald guys named Rick in the pro wrestling world. Uh, I can't even think of a third. Um, Mike Velasquez, Kid Vicious. Hey, buddy, long time. I hope you're doing good. Um, guys, that was that was cool. Um, Jake Roberts, I, I love how open he is. You know, that to me, that's what talking tough is all about. It's people that you know, a, a degree of fame in his case, a pretty large degree, I would say, that were absolutely at the top of their world at one point and then had that crazy crush to the bottom and, and somehow found their way out of it. And Jake's been really public about that. So I don't, I don't know if we talked about anything new today or if you all learned anything new. Uh, my, my takeaway from that is, and there is just always, always another chance. Um, I want to, John Pozorowski from Two Man Power Trip, one of the top podcasts in the pro wrestling world. He also produces Talking Tough. John, are you still there with us? You want to pop on for a minute? Yes, still here. Where are you, man? You, can we uh, can we see you? We see the two man yeah. power logo. Um, I know we're gonna see you. Um, there you yes. are. Yep. So, what what do you think, man? Any any takeaways from that? Great stuff. I mean, you get some uh, really really personal stuff about him that you probably don't get anywhere else. Uh, but really good stuff. Uh, the the um, resurrection of a relationship with him and Warrior, obviously right before Warrior passed after the Hall of Fame. That was kind of a very cool story to kind of get into. I like how he kind of really went in depth and said he was really going to you know, beat the shit out of the guy. And he apologized to him and he kind of caught him off guard. So he kind of mended a, a relationship he never thought he was going to mend. He thought he was going to end up you know, having to beat the shit out of the guy. Yeah. And I have to say, man, that, that actually is making me think about Warrior in a different light now. Also, I was glad to hear that. And, uh, you know, when we go through the programs that like the Jake and I and so many people that are watching have gone through, we um, we process our resentments, they call it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have to admit, I'm not there with all of mine and Warrior. There might be a little bit of that hanging on. So I, I was glad to hear that. I'll tell you one thing I wasn't um, planning on talking so much about was Jake's penis. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think yeah. so. No, but it was cool, man. I, I, that was that was really fun, man. Um, you know, it was interesting. As you know, I always tend to interrupt everybody. and I, I thought it was mm -hmm. just cool 
kind of shutting up for once, for at least I was shutting up for me and, uh, and listening to, to what he had to say. I like that. I've always liked him. And, you know, I, I think we find so many people in today's world that have these tales of redemption. And sometimes it's just a little preachy. And, and I don't mean to challenge humanity, but I think you wonder sometimes how, how real these, these tales are. And you know, in Jake's case, I've, from day one, man, I've always, it's always resonated. It's felt so real to me. And it just makes me happy to see how, how well he's done and how well he's doing. Yeah, Such he's getting uh, maybe a third chance or a fourth chance, you probably would say or you would think, but he's doing really, really well. And it's great to see him down uh, with Diamond Dallas Page and you know him getting into shape and him kind of being a mentor because he really is one of the greatest minds ever in the history of professional wrestling. So if you can get him on as a mentor and be a part of AEW you know, full time and really help those guys, whew, I mean, you can't get much better than that as far as a mind for the professional wrestling business. Jake is probably, if not the top, one of the top minds ever in the history of the business. Such a smart guy. Psychology always on point. His promos are the best. I mean, if he could help any of those guys talk and, and cut promos and stuff, I mean, they should listen to him 24-7. I would follow him around all day if I was working there. Lance Archer should be following him and calling him all day. Yep, agreed. Yeah, he's got a really amazing mind for that. Um, Stacy Angel is on with us from Heart Legacy Wrestling. Hey, Stacy, how are you? Mm. Um, I want to let you know, Stacy. I actually talked to Jake about coming in and doing something in Canada once the uh, travel restrictions have been loosened up a bit, and he was completely down for it. So I thought that was a cool thing to share with you here on Facebook Live. Uh, I don't really have much else, man. Um, I, thanks for, John, you know, this – John figuring this whole stream yard thing out. I think this is a really cool way to interview people. I'm a little slow on the technology uptake and you know, thank God you're, you're way ahead of me. I know we're largely figuring it out as we go, but you nailed this already. This is a really fun way to, uh, to do these things. And uh, I, any parting words, I'm pretty much there. I think. Well, what do you think about Jake? Like basically I know you know him personally and stuff, but what do you think mm -hmm. about where he is in life and mentally and, and have, like his place? Do you think he's good now? You think no more troubles? Do you think that this is the, you know, the up the mountain or you think there's going to be any more kind of peaks and valleys as he kind of goes along? Well, I was wondering the same thing before we started the interview. And if you asked me the question before, I would have said, I think he's pretty solid. Um, and I think a lot more so after hearing that uh, solely on, well, not solely, but one, one thing that stood out was him saying he doesn't even have, have the thought or the cravings anymore. Um, I didn't know that. I thought he was still fighting that, that craving demon. And when that's removed, that that's a huge step. I, I think he's been, you know, life's a roller coaster, as they say. And, you know, we've all been on it to one degree or another. Um, I, I think I've been on it. It's a pretty wild rides. Uh, I don't know quite to his levels, his heights or his depths, but I think that at this point and at this age, I don't think he wants to go up and down anymore. And I not only not wants, doesn't want to, I think he's committed. I think it's become ingrained in, in his character, in his being to not be on that ride any longer. Uh, in recovery, there, there's a saying that's in the saying goes, I got this. And that's the one thing you never want to say, because the, the theory goes, and this is from, from decades of data now, if you say, I got this, that's when you stop being vigilant and you open yourself back up to potential problems. And to me, he seemed to have struck that best balance of truly having it for real, but not resting easy on it. He feels pretty diligent to me in, in his recovery and in being solid. So then I, I think he's good. That's my opinion. Yeah, that's kind of where I was hoping because you would, you know, hope a guy like him always uh, is healthy. But especially now, he's like you said, he's going to be sixty-five. You just hope, you know, this is the, the good part. He's going to be healthy. He's going to, you know, stay uh, stay on the straight and narrow, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, not only I, th I think he will, and I think even if he wasn't at at Dallas Pages, because he won't live there the rest of his life, obviously, um, I think he's going to be good. And I the last two times I talked to him, well, the last time I talked to him, he was at Dallas before that. He was in a hotel room stuck at the Atlanta airport and right. the gym yeah. had shut down. The restaurants had shut down. He was basically stuck in a hotel room for weeks and he was fine, man. He was solid. And I was really glad to hear that because that, that's when you know you're in a good spot when the circumstances are challenging and you still have your spiritual practice and, and you still have your head on right. Um, 
But at the same time, thank God he's got Dallas Page in his life. I, I've oh, been yeah. to I've been to Page's house before, the accountability crib, and I've got to spend some time there working out with Dallas and Jake was there when I was there, and Scott Hull was there. And we did a bunch of yoga together and ate right and and did some spiritual practice. And it's a really, really solid environment. So I, mean, I know when he's there, he's gonna be great. But I, I dare say back in the hotel room or, or in Kansas City, wherever it may be, I think he's going to be fine. And I'm, uh, I don't say that lightly. It's really, really nice to be able to say that and feel that hope. Great to hear. Absolutely. So I, I think we should wrap up for the day, if that's uh, okay with you. Um, yeah, sounds good. I want, to say hi, I want to say hi to my friends, Dave Roberts and Vince Mercado. Super bad from UPW days. That's cool. Um, Ken Shanes, one of the great photographers from the UPW days is out there. Brody, hey man, I am doing well, Brody Dyer. I hope you're doing well also. Um, thank you for asking, appreciate that. So guys and girls, we're here on Talking Tough. This is uh, our relatively new podcast. John, I think we're in like week number, we're not even a month yet since we debuted. And but we're doing really, really well. And, and John, thank you you for for producing um it's been a really cool journey so far thank all of you people out there who are watching and downloading and uh this is the pitch i'm going to give you to please keep doing that you go to www.talking-tough it's right here under my giant head which i should be further back hmm. so i'll have to learn that as we go forward um talkingtough.com and if you click on the uh if you go down a little bit on the home page, you'll see the different places you can watch it, whether it's uh, iHeart or um, or Launchpad or Apple. And uh, if you have an extra minute to click on the Apple one, download an episode and take a, a minute or two. I know it's a lot to ask. We're all busy. Um, I'll gladly return the favor to give us a review, what you think. Um, I love constructive criticism. It doesn't have to be how great this thing is. If you don't feel it is, just be really nice to hear from you all. So thanks again for watching today. Thank you for the support. Uh, we've got some amazing conversations and uh, podcasts coming up. So please stick with us. Everyone stay healthy. Um, Rick Bassman for uh, John Pozerowski and the Two Man Power Trip and signing out, Talking Tough. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.